Sine leaned forward and placed his hand on Nutson's forearm. Dear chap, I hired you because you were a solitary hunter who'd lost his way in the wilderness. That was far more interesting to me than hiring tired ex-cops, unimaginative special forces types, or Machiavellian former spooks with egos the size of planets. Nutson angled his head. A pity, Case. Necessity. I needed the right man for the job. Sine's expression steeled. It's what spies like me do. Find the correct person for the task in hand. Nutson nodded slowly. I just wish we could flex our attributes on something other than divorce cases, financial fraud, and petty street gang crime. The communal entrance downstairs intercom buzzed. Nutson frowned. Are we expecting a client? Not to my knowledge. Amazon deliveries? You know I hate the internet. Sign stood and pressed the button that opened the communal entrance. Thirty seconds later there was a knock on the door. Sign opened the entrance. A man was standing in the hallway, late forties, cropped but stylish silver hair, medium height, slight build, tailored charcoal grey suit, highly polished black church's shoes, and a silk tie that was bound in a schoolboy knot over an expensive shirt with cutaway collars. Sign immediately suspected he was a military officer. The man was holding a leather briefcase. The man said in a posh but clipped accent, Sir, I'm here to speak to Mr. Ben Sign, and I apologise for turning up unannounced. I'm Mr. Sign. How did you know I was going to be here? The man gestured towards the communal front entrance. I have men. They told me that you and your colleague Tom Nutson were at home because... They've been watching my home. Sir, you have my name. If you wish to talk to me in the comfort of my home, I will need your name and position. The man hesitated. Colonel Richards, I'm commander of all military bases in the Falkland Islands. Sign gestured for Richards to come in. He patted the armchair used by all clients who visited the flat. Sign pointed at Nutson. This is Tom Nutson, my business partner. You may speak freely in front of him. I'd rather speak to you alone. Richard sat in the armchair and crossed his legs. Both of us, or none of us. The colonel bristled. Clearly he wasn't used to being spoken to that way. He held Sign's gaze. As you wish. Sign sat in his armchair and interlocked his fingers in front of his chest. Are you Army or Royal Marines? Royal Marines. Plus, I did three years in the SBS before returning to regimental duties and gaining a promotion. I struggle to understand why what unit I hark from matters to you. And I wish to have the measure of you before we proceed. What do you plan to do when you retire from the Marines? Sir, could we get to business? What do you intend to do when you retire? Sign repeated. I, I've been offered a senior position in BP. Also, I'll be sitting on the board of directors for a golf club, a charity, a London museum, and a national haulage company. All positions requiring energy and youth. You're retiring imminently, correct? In two months' time, the Falklands is my last posting. My successor is an air commodore in the RAF. Sign closed his eyes. So, what brings you to England at a time that presumably is very busy, given you're preparing to hand over the baton of command? I came to London to see you, but what drove me here rests in the Falklands. Richard opened his briefcase and withdrew a brown file. I want you to have this, but first let me give you some context to its contents. Sign opened his eyes and held up his hands. Remember, it is our prerogative to decide whether we take it on. Oh, I think you'll take this on. It's gold dust. And it could lead to war. In fact, we want it to lead to war. 